so welcome to another video today it is my november and december lookbook and uh yeah it's a little late a little bit late now i didn't do a december plans because i had all these grand ideas for december and unfortunately i got a cold which descended onto my chest and turned into bronchitis which i still kind of have at the moment fun times so i have a few things to show you my november plans were as ever super super ambitious i managed to get the few things that i was like oh i'm never gonna get these done i got those done i just didn't do the rest of the things so the few things were a three jersey dresses and it was jersey material that i'd had in my stash for so so long that i was just like need to make this up okay one of them was jersey material that i'd had in my stash for so so long the other two were fairly recent purchases and i just needed to make those up so the first one is what i'm wearing it is the vogue 9199 pattern and i'm going to include outdoor twirls down here it was a little bit sunny so it's a little bit washed out but i think you can get an idea of the print and that should give you an idea of what it looks like on if you have been watching the vlogs recently you'll know that i've just made myself another four of these i really really like this dress you can get it out of just under three meters of fabric because I, originally I wanted to try and make a victory patterns jacket dress with this but I only had three meters of this fabric and it has a very definite print on it and with the jacket dress I needed to be able to turn panels upside down to cut it out and that wouldn't have worked with this print so I did the 9199 and I really really like how it came out I opted to use the darkest panels or the darkest part of the print around my waist thinking that it would help with the optical illusion of cinching you in and I think that's worked really well. As you can notice the front panel is slightly higher than the two side panels but again I was working with very limited fabric and having to cut the pieces all in one direction. I've worn this a lot. I wore it one of the days when I was teaching at Beautiful Things HQ, teaching the NCW class. I wore it a couple of times over Christmas. It's been both times when mum got coconut in her calendar, which was fairly hilarious. It's a it's a pattern I love. I did make the long version in the pattern uh, envelope, as you can see here, it does have a high-low hem. I even the hem out to be the longest the whole way around. I, I very much like high-low hems, but I just decided for this dress, it would be better if it was all one length. It's not as full as, as most dresses that I make, but it does have a nice fit and flare silhouette to it, which I'm very happy happy with okay whilst I'm here I'm also going to talk about my closet case patterns Kelly anorak so this pattern has been on my make nine for the last two years and I finally got it done the inspiration for this particular coat is this image that I found on Pinterest now I do actually have the sequins to make the arms but I realised that for the use that I want to put this coat to, the sequins would be a really bad idea because they would rub off, they were, yeah, they were, they're were they far too delicate to be used as a coat that was meant to be an everyday coat, not just a piece of outerwear that gets worn to and from a club kind of thing, which is I think what that original jacket was intended to be. So I kind of went to the peeps and I, this was two vlogtobers ago, it's like, help me please decide what to do. And somebody came up with a genius idea of why don't you try some faux leather? So I did. I always knew that I wanted to line my Kelly Anorak and when I first originally bought the pattern it was an unlined pattern so I waited until she released the lining expansion and then I waited some more because I was just you know one of those put it off because it's terrifying kind of things. I always knew I wanted a fluffy hood, I always knew I wanted a fancy lining and the decorative sleeves but the, with, the, with the lining she has done it so that the sleeves don't have cuffs and I wanted cuffs so I kind of fudged these together they are most definitely not perfect but I'm really pleased with how they've come out and I'm very glad that I did get my cuffs so the sleeves are lined as well but because of the way that the cuffs are finished the the, the vent bit here I couldn't work out how I would line that without as as it were interlining the sleeves so that's what i've done so the sleeves were constructed as one piece with the lining and the wrong side of the leather and the wrong side of the lining together mum has very kindly quilted this for me i'll talk to you about that a bit more in a minute so i i kind of followed the instructions for the unlined coat as it were with the sleeves and i uh, trimmed and bound the edge with bias lining which has worked really well i used a different fabric on the interior of the sleeves because from experience know that this fabric is not quite slippery enough 
for you to easily get your arms in and out of the sleeves. So I've used lining fabric, which mum has amazingly quilted for me and she practiced her roses. So I was doing a close up of the interior of this coat because the interior of this coat is gorgeous. The other thing that I knew I wanted was a warm coat. So I took a leaf out of Lauren's book from Guthrie and Garni and I got myself some thin silate and then made puppy dog eyes at mum until she agreed to quilt tip for me with this fabric which is the silk cotton blend from Spoonflower. I believe this design is by Picoquette which is a designer that I absolutely love. I will link, I know that you can't get this base anymore but you can definitely get this print and I just absolutely love it for a lining. I think it's gorgeous. The faux fur came from the, the lady that I used to work with at the tunnel that made teddy bears. So this is faux fur that has also, other parts of it have been turned into teddy bears. And the people at the Dutch label company approached me and just said, have you seen our products? And I said, yes. And they said, if we gave you a voucher, would you order some? Because we'd like to get a review from you and about the customer experience and the design process and things like that. I literally went, yes, please, give me, give me, give me. Because of course I did. And I ordered myself some labels, which I absolutely love. They are giant and that was intentional. I got 30 of them. I uploaded my logo that my web designer has made for me. They came back and they said, because it, my logo actually hit the cat has a shadow and they said, we can't do that. So they took that one out, which is great. I absolutely love how it's come out. I really, really do. So far I've used two in, in two of the coats that you're gonna see today. And then I gave one to the lovely Lorianne who came all the way over from America to do a tour of the UK to meet loads and loads of her favourite sewing vloggers and she took the NCW class with me so I gave her one of these labels which she sewed into her NCW which I thought was lovely. I'm really really pleased with this. Pockets on this I, I've never done pockets like this before they're called bellows pockets. I decided that I wanted to line mine because you know I'm difficult so I've lined them which actually worked out really well and feels very nice and the reason I did that is because uh, people were saying that the back of the snap on the pocket caught on the back of their hand. So I thought, oh, you know, why don't I line it and make my life even more difficult? So yeah, I did. I think if I made this coat again, which is a definite possibility, I have fabric in the stash for another one already. I mean, I, I had enough stash, fabric in the stash for another one before I'd even made this one. But I think if I made this one again, I would maybe raise up the drawstring, although the drawstring is sitting on my natural waist or if I don't do that I might lengthen the bottom of it because when I wear it there's a lot going on in this area and then it's a very kind of nothing up top and I think it's maybe just me being super critical about it but it just just to me it just seems a little bit unbalanced as I say I the drawstring is at my natural waist I do have a super long torso I think this maybe just highlights that fact which is something that I try and disguise as often as possible but yes I love this coat. I love it. It took me absolutely ages to pluck up the courage to put in the press studs because you have to basically punch holes into your completely finished garment to put the press studs in. And I was worried that it was going to go wrong. And of course it did on the cuffs. So I'd kind of gone gung ho ahead and not just put the cuffs on thinking yeah it'll be fine and if I'd have only put one press stud on in the middle it would have been fine but there was so much bulk from the faux leather underneath this that when I when I punched the hole the press stud wasn't the the post of the press stud wasn't long enough to go through and catch onto the back so I had to unpick the cuff trim out all the excess fabric in there which I probably should have done anyway and then sew it back up again and just hope because I'd already made the hole just hope that it worked and it did thankfully the other thankful thing is that I don't have to undo these press studs to get this on and off which is great because the press stud does fasten correctly but it's one of those ones where you really have to kind of like smoosh it together because there is quite a lot of bulk around this area so uh yeah, you live and learn. But as I say, I'm really, really pleased with this. I think I've mentioned this in my resolutions tag, which went up this morning. I am in, yeah, I'm filming this on Sunday. Yeah, all, all my, I'm not going to work on Sundays, but I did take yesterday off. So, you know, it balances out. But in my resolutions tag, I did say that I think this is my proudest make of 2018. And yeah, I think, I think it is. I absolutely love it. 
And whilst we're talking about coats, I'm going to talk about my Nancy coat, which is actually the Ulysses trench coat by Victory Patterns. But I'm calling it the Nancy coat because the absolutely adorable Nancy sent me the kit. I mentioned on the peeps when this was released, I was just like, oh my gosh, I love that coat, I need one. And it was 150 Canadian dollars. And I was just like, I don't need it that much. I love it. I will buy the pattern and I will make my own version up in the UK. I'm sure I can source everything. And then an amazing parcel turned up to my PO box and it was the entire kit for this with a lovely letter from Nancy and just saying that, that I needed a little piece of Canada and I'm not going to complain. Nancy, thank you so, so much. I absolutely love the colour of this and I've got a twirl of me wearing it. That's definitely how I'd style it. Big jumper, skinny jeans and boots. Probably knee-high boots when I can get them over my skinny jeans, but at the moment ankle boots. And I just, yeah, it's it's got no warmth factor or whatsoever. Let's just clear that up right now. But it is gorgeous and it is a great kind of like a spring throw over. You need something but not like lots of warmth. I made this at the beginning of November hoping that I'd be able to wear it in November and um, no, it was cold and I couldn't. <laughs> I changed the pattern a little bit. It calls, it, uh, the, the, the kit came with the fabric and the lining fabric and it asks you to make your own bias binding from this lining. Well, I mean, if any of you know anything about me whatsoever, you know I have a little bit of a love affair with satin bias binding and I had this colour in my stash and it's perfect. So I decided that rather than make bias binding because I actually find it really tedious and I don't want to do it, sorry. So rather than make it, I used the pre-made stuff that I had in my stash and then with the excess lining, I lined the sleeves because again, as I mentioned with the Kelly Anorak, I find that it's very difficult to get my arms in and out of coats without things sticking, especially if they're unlined. And I knew the kinds of things that I would want to wear this over would stick to it. So I've lined it. And the, the lining, the rest of the lining was used in the storm flap at the back. The construction of the storm flap is ingenious and it has these little inbuilt holes in it, which are what make the belt loops. So all in all, I absolutely love this i think it's really really pretty it's the kind of thing that i like to wear when the weather is a bit warmer so yeah i'm really really pleased and thank you so much to nancy for spoiling me rotten and sending me the entire kit it is very much appreciated thank you okay so next up is the vogue 8972 and there is a sew along for that if you would like to see the pattern originally is for a woven fabric but mum and i decided that we wanted to try it in the stretchy fabrics because we really liked the silhouette so uh yeah we gave it a go and <laughs> It's worked out really well. So well, in fact, that I now have about 12 of these. Yeah, my five, five and I'm done rule kind of went out the window this month and majority of those have been made this month. I'd had some scoobers in my stash for so, so long that I just needed to get them sewn up into things that I could wear whilst the weather is still cold. So I did. That's why I'm not doing a January sewing plans video either because I've already made all the things that I'm going to make for myself in January. The rest of this month is going to be spent making NCWs. The one that I'm wearing at the moment, this fabric, I saw it on the textile centre and I thought it was very similar to a pink kind of scuba -y type fabric that I'd bought before so I snapped up three meters of it and it's actually a lot thinner it's not quite a thin tissue thin jersey but it's not like a thick scuba either and it's it is a jersey rather than a scuba but it has these kind of uh, dot gold foiled roses all over it and when i finished it i wasn't sure and having seen it on because there's a there's a twirl i do really like it it's just it's a little bit dressier than perhaps i would wear during every day Kind of wear and then it's a stretchy dress so it might not be something that i'd wear out in an evening either and i definitely wouldn't wear it dancing because i can imagine that i would get very hot in this very quickly having said all that i do like it i do like it so i will at some point wear it but I'm not sure when. As I say, it's a pattern that I love. It's a pattern that I can make up really quickly and it was one of those ones where it was just like, ooh, yeah, let's let's give that a go. And I'm really glad that I did because it is a pretty dress. The change that I made was to add long sleeves because the original pattern comes with sleeves that come just to just about my elbow. And whilst that's 
perfectly fine it's also not what i was looking for in a dress that i'd be wearing in winter i wanted something that came right down to my wrists and in fact i've probably made it a little bit too long but i prefer my dresses rather than sit sort of sitting up there i prefer them to be just kind of over my hand so yeah i think it's worked out really really well okay so i'm going to talk to you about this red coat but i, I actually finished this i think in february or march i for some reason didn't include it in that month's lookbook because i was doing editing for the all the twelfths of the year video and there was no coat here and i was like i'm sure i made it this year turns out i did so i put in a twelve which you can see here and i'm going to talk to you guys about it now although i did finish this ages ago so this is both a success and a failure i absolutely love how this looks i think it's an absolutely gorgeous coat but the fabric is a 100 percent wool fabric that i got from the textile center and i bought the last five meters of it and i kind of snapped it up and it's really 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 lightweight and i was thinking yeah dress coat that would be great it looked really really cool and it does but I wish I had interlined this. I didn't, and I should have. I really should have. It would have made such a difference to it. The collar especially, I should have put more interlining in there. I've interfaced it and it's got one layer of calico in there, but I should have, I should have beefed the collar up a little bit so i'm a bit disappointed with that but oh my goodness look at this gorgeous gorgeous lining so again this lining is from spoonflower it is i think another peacockette design i'm not 100 percent sure though so if i've got that wrong i will put the name of the designer on the screen and it will be listed in the description bar down below i used bias binding on this so the top of this is a lacala jacket pattern which i can't remember the number off off at the top of my head but again it'll be on screen the bottom of this is a mccall's coat pattern so the mccall's coat pattern also doesn't call for a lining so i drafted my own lining and then I drafted facings that would match up with the facing from the jacket and then used bias binding to finish off that edge. Basically bagged the coat out and I don't think that's how you're meant to do it but it, it, it worked and I like, I like the effect but I don't think that's the proper way of doing it. I have got uh, shoulder pads in here. You know, I, I made a lot of effort with this but the fabric itself is just so, so, so lightweight and flimsy. I wish I had interlined it with cotton flannel. I wish I had. I also have absolutely no intention of picking this thing apart to interline it with cotton flannel. It's a lovely coat, do not get me wrong, and I can disguise the fact that I don't love the collar quite as much as I should. I have an, an amazing faux collar that can go over the top of it that matches perfectly. So, you know, this will get worn and does get worn, but it's not warm enough to be worn, I mean it's fairly fancy, but it's not warm enough to be worn as an everyday coat in coat season. I don't go that many places where I need a fancy coat and when I do, I tend to wear things that are fairly brightly patterned. So it's kind of the wrong color for that as well. Having said all that, I did make a red silk Anna dress and I do wear it with that and it looks perfect with that. I actually don't mind it with um, this over this dress either so it's you know it's not it's not something that's going to languish in the wardrobe and never get worn but it's not the success that I was hoping it was going to be but I do like it and oh my god that lining is gorgeous absolutely gorgeous and the final thing I have to show you is this victory patterns jackie dress in this beautiful stretch velvet that I got from the textile center I maintained that this fabric is all Rachel from Stitched Up's fault because I was watching her video of her fabric haul and she so showed some fabric from the textile center and I went onto the site and they had this in stock so I bought it so Rachel totally your fault and yes okay fair enough I then introduced you to Sherwood Fabrics who were running a massive discount and it's where you spent all your birthday money but I knew that I wanted to turn this velvet into a jackie dress. I bought five meters of it, so I do have enough left to do something else with it. And I'm thinking an oversized slouchy batwing jumper or something like that. I can imagine myself wearing that quite a lot. And I have just enough fabric to do something like that, but not quite enough for a skirt, which would be the ideal situation. It's a navy blue with magnolias all over it, and it's gorgeous. So this is the third jackie dress that I've made. So I still have two more that 
I'm allowed to make if I stick to my arbitrary rule that I completely ignore whenever I want to. <laughs> I, I, I absolutely love it. I have worn this out. It's definitely a dressier version of a jersey dress, but it's so comfortable and I wore this out for the book club Christmas dinner. So I don't read the books, I don't attend the meetings, but I go to the fancy events because, you know, for food and food and dressing up you know there's something that I really enjoy I, I love this dress I did make some changes to this so the first two that I've made I didn't really like how the back was sitting and I decided with this one that rather than do the facing I would cut the back panel out with then the facing extension on the top and that way rather than the facing just being under tension at the waist it was under tension and in the seams as well so it was everything's lying flatter and it's worked I really like how this looks so I'm going to do that going forward from here with the other two that I'm going to allow myself to make probably be many more than two who am I trying to kid <laughs> I love this dress I think it's gorgeous I am literally it's velvet so I'm sitting here stroking myself I had this conversation with the peeps the other day actually in the comments on a video where I'd just finished all of the jersey dresses that I've made this month two of them were velvet and I Oh, the, the thing that I know with velvet is that the nap has to go the same way for all of the pattern pieces so that's a hard and fast rule I get that now do you have your velvet pile going down or going up because if you look on the internet there are different arguments for both mostly everybody in the peeps have said that they like it going down and there's one person who said she has a dress where it goes up and it really bugs her because you do you kind of stroke yourself and, and that's fine and this is fine but then if you're doing it this way it just feels wrong but it's got something to do with the way that the light catches it and, and how it uh, behaves when you sit on it and things like that as to which way the nap goes but for me I want to be able to <laughs> somebody said pet myself I, lo I love that Americanism I do so yeah you want to be able to stroke yourself you want it's it's nice it's soft so <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below if you have any opinions or if you know if there is a hard and fast rule of how it goes. But for me, I like my velvet to be strokeable whilst being worn. Anyway, <laughs> that was quite a lot of waffle for not very many makes, wasn't it? So I hope you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you again very soon. Bye!